Thakur from the Department of Ancient Indian History, Culture and Archaeology, Punjab University, Chandigarh. Today we will do second module, Painted Pottery up to 600 BCE. This module on Painted Pottery up to 600 BCE gives us useful information on quality, technique, design and fabric of pottery used since Mesolithic period. The panorama of contemporary life is evident from the painted designs on the pottery. Some painted motifs are abstract and are thus open to discussion and debate. The Indian history is replete with examples of painted pottery since ages. The excavations and explorations carried out in different parts of our country have yielded different kinds of pot shirts. These pot shirts help us to know about the kind of pottery used by the people during the ancient times. The ceramic remains help us to study the technique involved in the pottery making and the potters who were expert in manufacturing such superior pottery. The earliest pottery in South Asia is corroded ware from Chopani Mando, a Masolithic site in Belan Valley, Alabad. Jiya Sharma has dated it around 7000 BC. After a gap of 1000 years, around 6000 BC, handmade corroded pottery appears at Mehergarh, a Neolithic site situated in Balochistan, Pakistan. Mehergarh shows three phases characterized by different kinds of developments. The marked sensational changes were noticed in the development of crafts. The potter's wheel came to be used in Mehrgar. On this horizontal wheel, the pots could be rotated in order to receive symmetrical shapes which was earlier not possible. This device saved time and possibly could have made pottery cheap and easily accessible to all. The Masolithic period or Middle Stone Age is applied in Indian context to denote the cultural stage characterized by microlith industries not associated with pottery in general. However, it is only the contact with contemporary metal using and farming based economy. These people acquired such items as pottery, metal tools and beads for ornaments. Langraj, a Mesolithic site in Gujarat, divisible into three phases, gives us evidence of potsherds. The people gave up the use of iron tools and drew away from hunting and gathering. The Neolithic or New Stone Age marked the age of transition from hunting and gathering to food producing. The Neolithic culture in four zones help us to understand the life and culture of the regions. The four zones are northwestern, Northern, Eastern and Southern. In the Northwest, the first phase is pre-ceramic where no pottery is found. And in the second phase, handmade pottery was exposed. Kili Gul Muhammad in the Northwest Pakistan yielded pottery with basket marks, wavy lines painted on them. The third stage exposed wheel-made pottery with black triangles and oblique parallel lines painted on a red surface. In the northern zone, the Kashmir Valley yielded important evidence. Burzhom was excavated. The excavations in Burzhom was excavated. The excavations revealed that they made beautiful handmade pots as wheel was not known to them. They made weaving patterns as were made over mats. These were occasionally decorated with notched and incised designs. The color of the pottery ranged from steel gray to brown. A few painted pots with a horned deity painted on the shoulder of the pot is an exact copy of Fort Deji and Gumla pottery.
in the eastern zone Assam, Bengal and Odisha also show presence of pottery. Kuchai in Odisha showed brownish red wear tempered with chorus grit. Some shirts show incised decorations also. The Neolithic man in Assam made cord impressed thick grey wear and well fired red wares. Sarutaru in southeast of Bahati revealed ill fired queerly mixed pottery. The color of the pottery varied from brown buff to grey. The painting on the pots has cord impressed design. It is predominantly green in color and a small percentage of pottery has incised bone design on them as well. The Dakkan in South India, mainly the states of Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu have also yielded pottery which has incised decoration. One can notice red band on neck of grey and buff wares. The geometrical designs consisting of vertical, horizontal or oblique lines and crisscross pattern are noticed on the pots. The fingertip design and combed ones were popular in Karnataka. In phase 1 of Neolithic sites, the pottery was mainly handmade and in the next phase it was wheel made. The pots were painted in red color with painting in black or violet color along with black and red ware which later became the hallmark of Mesolithic phase. The pottery of various shapes was commonly used. A beautiful tea kettle from Takla Coat is an exquisite specimen. The pre-Harappan or early Harappan pottery dated 3200 to 2600 BCE was identified within the limits of India first by A. Ghosh in 1952 at Sotia Mound located on the bank of ancient river Drishtavati. This ware was reported from all sites located on Indo-Ganga divide. It is a wheel made pottery having dull red surface on which the decoration is done in black and white pigments. The white color was mainly used for adding dots and dashes or filling in solid blanks in order to heighten the effect of painting by bringing them in relief. The painting designs include geometrical patterns, horizontal bands, loops, wavy lines, concentric arcs, rows of dots, cross hedge triangles, semicircles, horizontal and vertical chains, tridents, stag, ipex, duck, cock, scorpion, fish, bull-headed human figure and a leaf, cacti, flowers, grass and palm tree. The geometric patterns and floral motifs have been placed side by side to increase the pictorial effect. The geometric patterns are in friezes and occur in panels also. In pre-Harappan phase 1, the pottery is handmade and in phase 2, it is wheel made. The vessels were painted with a white band in sepia or black. There is similarity in Saraikola phase 2 in Takshila and Kot Diji phase located on the left bank of river Indus. The period 3 shows the continuity of period 2 with fresh innovations. More than 22 pottery types are known from the area. In Kot Diji, white paint has been rarely used. A horned human head has been noticed painted on the pot. Similar painting has been noticed from Gumla, Saraikola and Burzahom. The pottery from Port Diji resemble the pottery recovered from pre-defense level from Harappa but none of the design is related to mature Harappan pottery. Amri located on the western bank of Indus yielded three periods of pottery making. The pottery is both 
hand and wheel made, having painting in black and red on the pots. A beautiful figure of humped bull on the pot from Amri shows the expertise of porters. Early Harappan pottery have also been reported from Kunal, Banavali, Kalibangan, Rakhigadi, Baror, Birana, Soti and Dhalwan. This pottery is less refined than the later pottery. Both monochrome and bichrome pottery was made by them. The pottery from this period is similar to Hakra pottery. This was made from fine clay and was red in color. It bore beautiful designs, usually in black. The main designs include fish, crocodile, loops and geometrical designs. The matured Harappan face that is 2600 to 2200 BCE is characterized by pottery having red surface. It is both wheel made and hand made. The ware is sturdy and well fired. It is characterized by typical paintings. The upper part of the pot is painted and the lower one is decorated with black bonds, dots or decorated with linear and geometrical patterns. The human and animal figures are seen painted on the pots. The chessboard checks, loops, trees, people leaves and chain patterns are also noticed. The core depression is noticed usually on the basis of the storage jars. However, incised decoration is uncommon. The evidence of surface treating done by the potters suggests that they were expert in this art. First of all, they scrapped and trimmed extra clay with the help of knife. Then the coating of sand was applied on the pot. In the third stage, they tried to de decrease the porosity of pots by doing slipping on the exterior. In the fourth and the final stage, polishing of the pot was done. The pottery of the period shows that it was made on fast moving wheel which rendered it high degree of symmetry. It was fired in both open and closed fire. Dung cakes were used as fuel. In the end, the ceramics were coated with red oxide to give them red color. The late Harappan pottery is mainly characterized by two main pottery styles. Harappan and Siswal. The late Harappan pottery of first kind is mainly wheel made, sturdy and of dull red color. It has medium fabric and is inferior in quality to the mature Harappan pottery. The Siswal pottery is made of battered navigated fabric, is wheel made and is mainly buff grey in color. The pottery is profusely painted and decorated with incised designs. The painting in black over a red slip chocolate color had been used over a pinkish red or buffish background. The main designs include linear, geometric and naturalistic motifs less carefully executed. The painting is done on the panels of the upper portion of the vessels. The zigzag lines, hashed triangles, diamonds, semicircles, lotus with stalk, horns, fish, peacocks, cranes are all noticed. The incised designs are present on the interior and exterior of the pot. These designs are executed with sharp teethed instruments, bamboo chips and finger marks by impressing cord on the wet surfaces. The most important characteristic is incised design representing vertical, oblique or flowing grooves at the shoulders of the cooking handies similar to Siswal.
the Chalcolithic or the copper using people were Harappan and non-Harappan. They mainly used copper and stone. The Banas, Malwa, Kaith, Jorve and ochre colored using people used different kind of pottery. In the copper coat cultures, black and red wear occur in a variety of culture contexts and have no distinctive typology. The Banas in Southeast Rajasthan used black and red wear painted in white on the exterior. Motifs mainly are geometric, parallel or oblique lines, circles and spirals. Kite culture in Madhya Pradesh is earlier than Malwa and Banas and is known for three types of pottery. The first type is thick, sturdy, having brown in violet or red linear design on the rim. The second type shows buff colored painting with designs like loops, festoons, lettuce and diamond line in red hematite. The third type is combed well, having incised decoration done with the comb. It is generally red and zigzag designs are common. The Malwa ware is buff orange, slipped pottery, painted in black and dark brown. The pottery from Nabtoli in Madhya Pradesh shows beautiful designs in black or brown over buff or orange slip. The fabric is thick, the lota with spout and pedestal goblet are the main shapes of pots used by them. More than 600 motifs are painted on these pots, mainly geometric, naturalistic, animals such as dog, bull, deer, pig, panther, fox, crocodile, tortoise, insects and human figures are also noticed. Jorway in Maharashtra in the Dakkan Plateau is known for well-baked pottery. The Jorway ware is the hallmark of the culture. The wear is orange or red having geometrical designs in black color. The pottery is well baked. The ochre colored pottery was first discovered in western UP. It is ill fired and is mostly wheel made. It is thick and of red color with black designs. The pottery has incised designs and graffiti marks also. The pottery is named so because it left an ochre colored mark on the fingers when rubbed. The Eastern Chalcolithic cultures of Bihar, Bengal and Odisha revealed well-made pottery. Both hand and wheel-made pottery was popular. The red wear, grey wear and black and red wear comprise of the ceramic industry of this culture. The paintings are all geometric without any human or animal designs. The painted grey ware or PGW culture is named after a ceramic industry. This is a very fine, smooth and even coloured pottery having a thin fabric. This culture marks the beginning of Iron Age in India. This culture brought the middle Gangetic plains to the threshold of urbanisation. The main concentration of the ware is in the western part of Ganga Yamuna Dwab. Occasionally, Shirts have also been found as far as Vishali in Bihar, Gosh Chosla and Gondi in Ajmer and Jaipur in Rajasthan. The true picture of painted greyware culture emerged with the excavation 
at Hastinapur by Bibi Lal, who associated this culture with the Mahabharat. Incidentally, Hastinapur was the capital of Pandavas. The other ceramics which are associated with this pottery are redware, plain greyware, black and redware, without painting, and black slip liftware. Painting is a distinctive feature of this ceramic tradition. On PGW, the painting is generally executed in black or chocolate color. However, white and red pigments have also been used. The pigment has a matte finish. In some cases, it has a glossy finish as well. The paint was applied on the pot before it was baked. The close study of the pattern shows that outline of designs was first drawn in a thin deep black line. The designs on this pottery can be divided into two classes, the stamped and the painted. The stamped decorations are rare. A single punch circle is to be seen at Hastinapur. The paintings range from small strokes, wavy and plain lines and dots to complicated floral patterns. There are sophisticated patterns like sun, lotuses and leaves. This ware was produced from a well levigated clay free from all impurities and was turned on a fast wheel. It represented a highly developed technique in ceramic manufacturing. The black pigment used for painting was made from iron oxide. The uniform color and the delicate texture of the pottery indicate very sophisticated fire techniques. A uniformly high temperature must have been maintained in the kiln to produce such beautiful and fine pottery. The brushes used for painting were not thin occasionally, fairly thick brushes were also used. Besides single brush, the use of multiple brush has also been testified. The dishes of different types were commonly modeled of this ware. This ware was a deluxe ware and enjoyed the same glamorous place in society as the silver ware has today. The fabric and painting executed on PGW seems to be far superior to what preceded this pottery. The pottery occurs along with plain grey, black and red ware and black slipped ware. The detailed study of the painted pottery used in different periods help us to understand the life and culture of the people. The fabric, the color, shape and design all help us to know about the society, economy and technological advancement from the handmade to the wheel made, from crude painting to fine painting and from monochrome to polychrome pottery. The similarities between pottery designs and fabrics help scholars to conclude similarities between the cultures. The painting of horn deity, people leaves, fish scales, geometrical designs, trees, animals, lotus, cattle informs us about the flora and fauna of different cultures. Graffiti marks are mostly geometric in form, resembling sun, fish and man. However, in some cases, leather, boat and arrowhead is also noticed. The scholars interpret these marks as pictographs or marks of identification, whereas some view them as a representation of magic. Yazdani argues that there are 130 marks on the pots, while Lal observes around 60. These graffiti marks are common on Harappan, late Harappan, Chenkolithic and Megalithic pottery. These are rarely seen on the Neolithic pottery. The 47 symbols are common to the Harappa, Chalcolithic and Megalithic pottery. A few are exclusively seen on the Megalithic pottery. 
such as M shape or Brahmi letter M. Oblique lines cut by different kinds of lines. Lal argues that there seem to be a definite meaning and purpose of these decorations on the pots. Some marks appear on the Harappan and early Brahmi seals also. Majority of these occur on the black and red pottery from the 3rd millennium BC to the early centuries of Christian era. Whether they had any phonetic or alphabetic value needs to be seen carefully. The continuity in pottery forms and designs suggest continuity of traditions. Some motives are considered to be mythological. The peacock with a human form, bulls and cows with attachment to their horns, horned animals facing each other are interpreted in various ways by scholars. These artifacts and fragments are left for us to admire not only for the power of observation but remarkable draftsmanship of the master artists of those times.